Here's my uh, Heathkit IT11 VTVM that we're going to be revisiting while we wait on parts to come in for the fender. Um, there's a previous video that I'm going to link to uh, that shows this model working, and work it does. It works very well. For those who don't know what a VTVM is, when you're working on tube amplifiers, there's a very, very high impedance uh, that's used when, when this is employed to measure. It doesn't have an, of an impact on the circuit you're measuring. Other voltmeters, when you connect it to the circuit to take a measurement, uh, the voltmeter in the circuit actually affects the value you're measuring, which is obviously extremely bad. This VTVM has just an, an astounding value. It's like two mega ohm or something like that or more. So it, it's a wonderful thing to own. Unfortunately, even though this one works, works absolutely perfectly as demonstrated in the video, it only works perfectly on one or two settings. And that is because the resistors, these, these, um, uh, 1% resistors are, are out of spec on, on some of those settings. And some of the folks at, at, at work at my job have been following along as we've been discussing how, how to uh, get some of these resistors. And the ones you can see are, are annotated that I found were out of specification. And I was really specific about it and went along. Eventually found from Mauser. Uh, I ordered these. Some are 1%. A lot of them are 0.1%. And some of them are, are, are combinations thereof in order to attain those values and I had ordered them and on the back of this sheet uh, you could see that I had put together a couple of combinations to attain values for instance um, 9 meg is a combination of 4 and 5 but 5 would be um, a 1% resistor and 4 which says C7 meg which is another combination is actually a, a 0.1% tolerance so it's, it's well within tolerance uh, the resistors have arrived in a box over here. They're of, of different sizes and, and quality. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these together. We're going to replace what's necessary. I'm going to save these because these are awesome resistors. Uh, obviously not 1% spec anymore, but definitely a contender for, for 5% and what have you. And then we're going to recalibrate this unit and get it back up and running. So we're going to do all this. This was a lot of work to, to finally sort this all out from Mauser, but... It, but you know, for the price I paid, like 20 bucks, really, really wasn't that bad. So there we go. Just to give you an idea how this all works, our first one is 9 mega ohms, reads 9.58. It's out of spec. And it's this one right here. And um, uh, what we're going to use, obviously, I, looking at my chart, is, is one of these two. This is a, a 4 meg at 0.1 in combination with this 5 meg at 1. Uh, obviously, every one of them is going to be tested. Uh, make sure that with it, they're within spec. They'll be soldered together, uh, retested again for the resultant value, and then brought in the board, and then the final test will be done, be checked off and moved to the next one until they're all done, and then the final test will be done. So far, we've got our 9 meg combination in, our 900 and our 90. Uh, the reason I did it in this order is because it's contiguous and limited the amount of resoldering that would need to be done. So as I reconnected and disconnected, I went along the line like that. Uh, down here, I've got my 7 meg on deck. And the 7 meg also means that the 70, which is also being replaced, so the 7 meg and 70 will also be in one shot. So now I need to test these, bring them together, uh, bring them in on their terminals on the 7 meg, and do those as well. Now we have the 7 meg and the 2 meg completed and tested. Now we'll proceed to the final resistors. Not only do I have every resistor replaced perfectly within 1% specification, but I've also got a perfect 9.1 ohm resistor right here. And that was the one up here, and it was reading 9.5. And while it was within 5% tolerance, I was able to get my hands on a 2 watt 9.1 that read exactly 9.1 on a very highly calibrated measurement. And I put that in there. So that helps for the um, measuring resistance. Now I've got that down packed. I've added this one here. Uh, the reason why I gave this a little bit more relief right here is because there is a metal bar here. So I made that one just a little bit longer. That's why that was done to clear that metal bar. But all these measure absolutely perfectly on, on the multimeter. Absolutely perfectly. So we're ready to do calibration. One thing I will never understand about this particular model from Heathkit is why their calibration knobs are recessed so far deeply into this unit. Uh, aside from the safety factor, I mean, the cover has to be off, you know, the shield has to be off. Here's the unit, you know, sitting upright. 
there's no way for it to sit up and, and the tubes aren't even in yet, right? So the tubes would begin and you have to get a screwdriver up and under there to do these adjustments. There's no holes in the back of the unit to do this. So the cover has to be off. This has to be propped up, you know, to, to display the front of the unit. And then you have to get back there and do the calibration. It's not, it's not fun. I don't know why they didn't put it on the side or, or, or mount it in the back, but, but it is what it is. And you can see the, the capacitor has obviously been upgraded from, from my previous project that I did. There, it's been recapped and, and all the resistors obviously tested except for the, the ones, the precision ones. But uh, we're going to let it warm up and then we're going we're gonna to do this job. We'll be using the manual straight off of the iPad to do the calibration. For the calibration, obviously, for safety purposes, we'll be using a uh, standard plastic screwdriver. I've let the meter warm up, but ironically, the first test is done with the meter off. And that's by setting this screw down here for the zero position with the meter off and tapping the meter. I've done so with the meter off to get that zero position, and now we're going to turn the meter back on. The first thing that was checked was zero adjust, and that should allow for deflection at least around or at maximum halfway up the scale and to come back down. And that much worked, as we see here. I could come up the scale just about there and back down. So that's what we're looking for. It also talks about that there should be at zero very little change from DC plus to DC minus. This all pretty much depends on how close you are to zero. So if you get it right on zero, there'll be very little deflection. But the further you are from zero, the more, um, wrong direction, the more that'll shift. So as I'm, if I'm a little under, then flipping it'll bring me a little over. If I'm a little over, flipping it'll bring a little under. And I checked that and collaborated. When I got it right on the money, it didn't move at all. I'm calling that good and I'm moving on to the next step. I've done the uh, DC calibration uh, for deflection of 1.5 volts. This is uh, 1.478, this battery right here. I've done for uh, both uh, polarities. And you can see here, this is absolutely perfect. We're gonna call that good. We're gonna lock it down for this deflection. I've done plus and minus. I've set it up for minus for this video because uh, only minus allows for one hand. But look at that. That right there is exactly what we're looking for. So that's 1.48 right there. Amazing. I couldn't do the 1.56 originally specified for with the dot there because the batteries that I'm getting here as measured on the Fluke are not 1.56. They're uh, measuring 1.6. So there's no sense in using the dot. Uh, the Fluke collaborated what the values were and then I measured it on this. So very good. That's the first one right there. Perfect. Next is the ohms check. I've set the device to ohms. Uh, I have turned the ohms adjustment until we've hit the bar that says infinity. Uh, the infinity marker is just outside of view, but you can see it's on the infinity marker. And the goal is here is to simply be able to, to short this as set to um, uh, AC or ohms. And by shorting it, the needle should drop all the way to zero, just as it does. And that is the ohms check for this device, because obviously if they're connected together, there's no resistance. And that shows that the ohms portion of this is working from infinity to zero. We're going to call that portion done. The final portion of this calibration is actually to remove the test probe, set the adjustment to 1.5 volts, the most sensitive, and be able to go from AC to DC minus to DC plus with little or no deflection on the needle. So we'll do that now. Right now I'm on AC, DC, the other DC, back to DC plus, back to AC, DC, DC, DC. AC. So we have good calibration and this is probably from the calibration I did last time. You know, this was calibrated before. So that's good. We're going to call that good and we're going to move on to the uh, final steps for calibration. I figured out when it comes to testing DC, you just got to build a better mousetrap. And what I did was end up using my trusty IT11 again. It, uh, sends out a uh, DC all the way up to 600 volts. Very little current, but 600 volts. I started at three, which had no good voltages, actually 12. You know, the, the slightest amount, one, one microamp will drop that to three, but still for our purposes, what I did was I connected it to the Fluke and at the same time also connected it to this and then set the calibration. So you can see I have a setting of, of 12, just over 12, you know, 
notch over 12 at, at 50 volts, you know, which isn't the optimal resolution for this, but at this setting you can see that it's 12 and change, right? So 12.3, I can knock that down to 15, right? 15, you get some resolution here, and you can see it's just a hair over 12. So showing 12.2 right now. So that's good. I can go through a range of voltages and test them. That's how I'll do it. This, this DC, this meter, this project on this meter came out so perfect. Now I'm gonna use this IT11 to go through the whole sweep. It's with a, a great deal of pride and satisfaction that I'm able to, to use this now as a pretty much a reference standard at this point. So I'm gonna go through, adjust accordingly as required. <clears throat> We're gonna start at 15 because we have to, because the open voltage on this unit is actually 12 volts even on even on three that's just the way it is so that's what we're going to do right so our first one and there is a degree of parallax here so you'll just have to know that these are are on the money from where i sit that we are as we sit here we're looking at at 12.5 right where it should be so this is 12.5 as as where i'm seeing it <clears throat> and we begin And then the next one is 15. We fall back to 15. Seventeen. I'm sorry. Eighteen seven five. Twenty three. Thirty-two. We're going to bring it up. We fall back. Thirty-two. Fifty-two on top scale on the one fifty. Ninety-four. Real nice. Fall back. We come to ninety-four on the fifty scale. 138, just under 140, 190, just under 200, 234, just under 240, or just between uh, the two right there, between 220 and 240. <clears throat> we can see 284 between 270 and 290. Uh, for safety, I'm going to... Well, let me see. No, I should be okay. Yeah. <clears throat> 333. On the money. Our next one is 400. We should be okay. Reach 377. Next one, even 450 is going to reload. That should be okay. 427. Reads perfect. Next one, 500. Even that one should be okay because it's going to read low. Reads 480. Again, on the money. And 600. I'm not going to take my chances. I'm going to dial it back. There's 480. Reading on the next scale, perfect. 4.8 on the 150. There's 607. Reading just a hair over six. This was an absolute success. The project came out perfect. I'm going to put this back together, and this will now be um, used for my repair of vacuum tube devices, ham radios, and amplifiers. Thank you all for watching.